come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and germs, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every Saturday night, the Freak Show happens, whether you're ready for it or not. We're on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and more. If you find us on one of these fine repositories of internet talk, give us a like, a thumbs up, or a share. Subscribe. Or yeah. yeah. Forget the thumbs Show up. Show somebody. Subscribe or something. Yeah. Write a review. Show Tell somebody people. else. <laughs> Make them write something. Uh, every week on the show, we watch a movie, and then we talk about it for your enjoyment and edification. We're the internet radio superstars. Who's going to dispute that? Right. Not Sean. Travis. Or Holly. And I'm Colin. And this <laughs> week we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Me. What we watch? We watched What We Do in the Shadows. Do you know who the director of this movie was? I do. It was <laughs> Jermaine Clement and Taika Watiti. You practiced that, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> what I would we know that one pronunciation. I wrote down how to pronounce it in my little notes here. Mm. Watiti. Watiti. Oh. What would we know them from? <laughs> Um, you would know Jemaine Clement from Flight of the Concords, mostly. I think is his huge fan base. Men in Black 3. Oh, no, he's been in a lot. Especially Men in Black 3, who didn't love that. Uh, yeah. But Flight of the Concords, I think, is his main claim to fame. I just watched a movie of his on Netflix this week called uh, People, Places, Things. And he's, re- if you like the indie stuff, he's got some good stuff out there. That was a really good movie. It's on Netflix right now. Hmm. Um Flight of the Concords is one on what, like HBO or something like that? Showtime? Showtime, I say. okay. And it ran for like a few years? It's not two, still going? I think, it was, I think it was two years. Okay. It was, it, yeah, it was a short-lived show, but a fan favorite from what I understand. Yeah. Not real familiar with it, but... It's kind of like a New Zealand version of uh, Tenacious D, kind of. Basically, yeah. Not really like metal, but just yeah. funny songs. Right. Oh, but Con- they're musicians. Flight of the Concord yeah. yeah, is they the name CDs. of the band. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry if I'm ignorant here, but no, yeah. No, no, no. You're fine. <laughs> no, no. We've officially reached the limit of the knowledge that I know about it. So don't feel bad. All right. So what we do in the shadows is this is from what, 2014? 2014, 2013, 2014. Yes. And it is a mockumentary that follows around a group, four vampires who live in a house in Wellington, New Zealand. That's correct. All right. So I guess, you know, I mean, one of the things is, is that you look at like uh, as far as, so it's a comedy. It is a comedy, very much so. But it also seems to play really uh, strict to like the rules of vampire movies that we've seen yeah. throughout, you know, the history of The Hollywood. way this movie's described is a... A uh, mockumentary that is a horror comedy is how it's described. Now, compared to what we've usually watched, I don't know if we could say it's horror, but it does play to the genre. Uh, there was a lot of blood the squirting the and gore. There was a lot of blood. That's true. That they is true. They treat the vampires, I guess, I don't know, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like with, uh, <laughs> they respect the fact that they are vampires, I suppose. And so, like, and all the, the, the trappings that kind of come with that. You've got four guys, or at least initially, right? Mm-hmm. So we've got, there's a guy named, what is it, Vigo? Viago. 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 And That's the director, the... right? One of them. Pate. Watiki. Mm-hmm. He's Watiki. the big one, right? He's directing Thor 3. He is. He's directing Thor Ragnarok. So he's, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. He also directed um, Boy. I think it was a pretty big independent movie in the last year or so. Mm. That one slipped my radar. Yeah. He's he's done a lot of indie stuff as well. Yeah, he's bringing a comic yeah. flair to Thor. We assume. Yeah, the Thor Hulk Feels adventure. Like it. Yes, it yeah. the buddy comedy that is the road movie that is <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, which I'm looking forward to. I mean, mm. I don't know. I'm kind of excited about it. Well, I mean, just the the vampire types that they have collected at the beginning is kind of like these. I mean, I don't know. Are they archetypes of the kind of yeah? Know? Like Vlad the Impaler is mm. uh, what is his name? The and, guy from Fly of the Concords. Yeah, yeah. Jemaine Clement. Yeah, I can't remember his character. Name Vladislav. Now. Yeah, Vladislav. Vlad. Yeah. I used to poke them. Yeah, He's the got poker. the, the Vlad Hungarian. The poker. <laughs> <laughs> shall, shall we poke them? Yes. yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Facebook joke. Uh, but he's so he's got the kind of the the Hungarian the Dracula thing going yeah, on, right? The yeah, folklore Dracula. Very, Vlad, very Gary Oldman. Vlad the Impaler. Very Gary Oldman. For Viago's sure. a like a foppish dude from like 
He's significantly younger. He's like 180 years 186, old. 186, yes. Yeah. Newly vampire. Was he? Yeah, where was he from? I don't know if they said if he was like a where he got shipped from French. Uh, was he French? No, I think he was like English? Hungarian. Hungarian. Yeah, he knows German so. when he's Swazi. talking yeah. to. Yeah, his, that's right. Uh, he is talking German. Yeah. yeah, he talks to his former servant at one right. point, and then Deacon. there's and Deacon. where's he from? He's like, uh, what was he? well, he he was. He, I mean, he he talks about that he was uh, a Nazi vampire, but. Originally, wow. he looked like he was from like Transylvania. Yeah, right. He just has the story about finding the castle. <laughs> like it was a I was delivering yeah. goods, to selling this my wares. Creepy castle. I thought it was a creepy castle. <laughs> and, and then, then this vampire, Peter, Peter, <laughs> Peter, so, Peter, Peter, and Peter. Yeah, so Peter is this like what eight thousand year old yeah. Nosferatu looking <laughs> vampire. He's got yeah. the Max Shrek, you know, thing going on. Yeah, and he lives in a coffin in the basement. And he's the one that turned them all. Like, they're all his, uh, or who's the sire, right? The person that turns them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's what I liked about the way, I guess, okay, if we, so if we start with Peter, you know, as being the oldest one. Should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's this interesting character, because he doesn't really say, I don't think he has a single line in the entire He doesn't have one movie. line, and they wrote his part that way. Yeah? He didn't say one line. Right. Well, because when you look he's like that. just intimidating. What is, yeah. But he, he is pretty scary. And that's it's, where that's I good, think yeah, it's modern good, day like Salem's Lot. Right. It's very good. But that's where I think this movie like, you know, like actually works in that way that like it's a comedy. Yeah. And this is kind of a ridiculous setup. But like he is legitimately like intimidating when he shows up. There's yeah. that scene where there's a victim that gets away and is running and Peter like jumps out of the dark and yeah. grabs him. And it was like, ah, Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Or even the very beginning when when Viago is waking up his his flatmates. And he goes to wake up Peter, and he's like, Peter. He's like tapping him, and then he wakes up and hisses at him, and he jumps. He's like, he even scares his own roommates. Yeah. He scares other vampires. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just an interesting that you would, I mean, I guess to represent all of these different flavors of vampires that we've seen in movies, you know, to have like this guy that you're just going to say, like, <laughs> he's just going to be like this presence. But they they treat him so, I guess, I don't know. All of the vampires are harmless to us, the viewer. Because the documentarians are wearing crucifixes, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, there's like uh, a been promised unholy a masquerade every year that yeah, the, this, uh, these events are leading up to the masquerade ball to the unholy masquerade ball, <laughs> right? And and the Vampire is, League and the Witch Council and <laughs> right, the, the club. It's a club. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best part. That's why I like the way that the whole thing's presented. Is like this is a presentation of the New Zealand Documentary Film Board or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like this is our yeah. exclusive <laughs> access to this unholy masquerade. <laughs> and I guess I kind of like that that they you know were setting that up because uh, the masquerade bit because like in the third act where you're just kind of like you know it's like where is this movie going to end up going? It's mm-hmm. like right when you're kind of like okay you know we've had enough of these like little comedic bits yeah it actually does like and then it's like oh yeah then we're tying it together this is yeah. where we promised you we were going right yeah. at the beginning and you can getting kind of to feel know the, the characters now we're showing what this all has been for because yeah, this yeah. was actually a short film that uh these guys did um i'm sure a few years before this or however to get the money right and that's the only thing left out of the short film is the masquerade like you get like the conversation of like the flatmate duties, you get like <laughs> Nick the new vampire. It really? It's yeah. A lot years. of this stuff is from the short. It's like it's amazing when you watch the short film. It's amazing how much they still took from the short film. They didn't really change a lot. They're like, well, these are the funny jokes we have, you know. Um, well, I think it was what you what you said. It was it was a concept short. Like we yeah. want to make this movie. This is what we're going with for sure. Cause so, well, yeah. cause this is also, I mean, if you're any in anywhere, but America, basically the government will fund your movie or yeah. help you fund your movie. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, like but 10 I'm sure a year or something yeah. like yeah. that. that you can actually, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure you have to make some sort of a submittance or mm-hmm. something like that to be like, Hey, sure. come on. And then plus they're like, New Zealand's like, we got Fly the Concourse and Peter Jackson. Like, let's just like, let's Who, do this. Who, of course, is thanked in the, the first person to thank in the credits, <laughs> which well, I think is a legal obligation for anybody scene, who comes from there. The mm-hmm. scene where they run into the werewolves um, when they're chaining themselves to the trees. They're werewolves, not swearwolves. That's swearwolves. right. That's so that funny. scene was shot um, in one of the locations of Lord of the Rings. Mm, yeah. on Specifically the hill, yeah. on the hill, yeah. See, I want to go off on a little bit of a tangent about mockumentaries and why I like mock- mockumentaries. They're some of my favorite type of uh, comedies, like everything by Christopher Guest. Mm-hmm. And it's because yes. you're not so bogged down with a plot that you, that like, I, I just think uh, 
comedies, unlike almost any other form of uh, storytelling, you get to really focus on who the characters are. Because that's mm-hmm. the only thing that makes them funny or interesting is they have to come up with their backstory. It's like, and like most of the times when you hear like, oh, actors come up with their backstory, none of that shit's on the screen, none of it's, but like when you're doing these type of movies, that's all you have. Right. All you, you have is... talking directly to the camera yeah. telling you this stuff. And I'm yeah. sure they, you know, I mean, who knows how many like edits they do of of how many different oh, yeah. lifetime well, stories or plenty of extra features on this where you can just let the camera roll and these guys just get to riff, you know, in character. Yeah. And but, talk about, you know. But it's cool that they at least everybody does find a story. Like Viago has Catherine, like yeah. he, he was supposed to follow this girl to uh to uh New Zealand, but his uh he got shipped wrong. Yeah. yeah they uh <laughs> You didn't pay the right fare, and it took 18 He's months. such a polite guy, Viago. It's That's like what's so he's funny. The most li- well, I don't know if he's the most likable, little... but... Yeah. He's yeah. like your main focus. He's, they said it perfectly in the film they described him. He's an 18th century dandy. Yeah, <laughs> right. So yeah. he's a big Perf- fussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which no, they, but... they based... I don't know if... Yeah, they based um, each character on a specific, um, like, classic vampire. Like, I yeah. wrote... They did. I wrote down what they based them on, and you guys kind of already hit most of them. Peter? Well, uh, wait, yeah. hold on. So let's okay. say that uh, Viago is Lestat. Close. Louis. Okay. From Interview with a Vampire. All right. I'll and say then... Deacon's Lost Boys. <clears throat> no, Deacon. No? This one I thought was more of a stretch. I think probably when he originally got written, he was like this, but I think he got developed more. They based him mainly on Bella Lugosi. Really? Yeah, which I think... Like, I can see that. Mm. He's got the heavier accent. And... Yeah, like I think it got swayed a little bit when he took over the character, but originally he was... Yeah, because I'm trying to think of... Because Deacon was like really different in the uh, short film. Not like hugely different, but the like... Same actor? Same actor, but you can just tell like that's the main character they kind of changed from the short film to the to mm. this actual film the guy's personality got in there and yeah. kind of they shaped I'm sure or that. they just needed a different I'm sure maybe two of the vampires were a little too similar so well, they just wanted thing. to make yeah. it stand one out off of Bella Lugosi then you've got uh sorry I keep forgetting his name it's not uh Which, Diago? Diago the foppish no the other Vladislav guy Vladislav Vlad. Vlad. Well, you should be able to Vlad. remember that Vlad. he's Vlad. based on Vlad, Vlad the Impaler. yeah he's Vlad the poker <laughs> but you have another Hungarian guy <laughs> he's got the Bella Lugosi his, perform- yeah, his performance was influenced by Gary Oldman. Mm, okay. You can tell that. Well, yeah. he like wears the hair. <laughs> the, the hair, yeah, 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 naturally. Peter, did we say Peter's Nosferatu? Yeah, yeah. And Nick, Twilight. Of course. For sure. Twilight. <laughs> he's just, he's your, Nick is your modern vampire. Right. That's like really what this movie like takes form as, right? Like your second act is the introduction of a modern day guy into this group of these ancient vampire guys. Yeah. Oh, that's and, so good. oh, dude, the fact that he, like, Stu. <laughs> well, that, that's the, coming, I, the coming out to Stu? Dude. Oh my God. Well, that's what's so great. It's like, I mean, Perfect. once again, like I said, how, like, this, it's all about characters, right? I mean, you know, like, Nick's friendship with Stu is, well, Stu used to date my sister, but we kind of got along well. So when they broke up, I didn't, you know, I didn't yeah. have any hard feelings. So he's my best mate now. Two, <laughs> he's my two mate, things. And I wouldn't eat him. Vampire mates shouldn't eat human mates. mates. Two things. <laughs> and I won't. The and script for this movie was to. not revealed to any of the cast or crew. They wrote the the main synopsis for each character and the storyline, the plot, but the entire movie was improv. All really? their all their you lines, can tell. all their lines are improv. And Stu is played by Stu Rutherford, who is an actual computer analyst. They told him he was going to work on computers for the movie, <laughs> and he was only going to be part in it. And he ended up being one of the main characters. That would explain a lot That's about brilliant. his reactions to right. stuff. All of his <laughs> reactions are absolutely true. Yeah, appear. I'm on camera. The camera's yeah. on. I'm supposed to be doing something. I'm just going to nod. But it just makes him like this kind of awkward. Yeah, like guy. when they like when they're fighting, they show him just watching washing the dishes. Told he had no idea what was happening. Yeah, yeah. totally real. Yeah, which I That's love. It's a brilliant move. I love. Yeah, I like the way that they, the vampires end up liking well <laughs> Stu more than Nick. Yeah, because Nick gets turned by Peter in like an impulsive, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right after the pischetti. So, I actually like that, that, that scene. scene. That's that like that's great. when this movie can actually like flip the switch and get, turn a little creepy, right? When you're doing Which like scene? Nick trying to leave the house after yeah. they're oh, doing yeah. the like your penis is a cobra. <laughs> <laughs> that's not cool, man. Make, making this. my food turn, making me eat worms and turning my penis into a cobra. It's not cool. We learned this from the Lost Boys. <laughs> yeah, we have learned this from the Lost Boys. That was a really. They seem funny to be record. very up on their current movie. Well. Yeah. Uh, we once went to the dance as Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, Sister, Sister Act. Act. From Sister, and Act, Sister Act, Act 2. And Sister Act 2. 
Uh, See, that's what I feel you like. Can't I can't go as Blade. But that's what I feel like, right? Like, if you can, like, actually build a different story around this, it's like Viago is the vampire that wants to get into the modern world, yeah. while the other guys, they don't mind staying back and, like, you know, whatever, their their old ways right. or whatever. Yeah. So Viago, that's why Viago is the one that's really happy to talking to the camera. Like, this is what we do. He wants to, like... Yeah. You know, he's and he's the one that's kind of most excited when Stu shows them like computers. Like, right. and I, I like that scene when Nick's like, you know, maybe there's stuff that I could show them that could show them, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. I love Nick, dude. He's like one of the best vampires. Because I've always so hated good. every vampire movie ever since the like mid 80s. It's always about the main character turning into a vampire, right? Like, yeah. we totally ran out of the whole vampires, the monsters. So. And Why don't was, we? That went that way for like was seventy years or something like that. It was the vampire was the monster coming, you know, to take mm-hmm. your yeah. women, you know. And then in the eighties, it was like, you know, well, you're what get, if they're the vampire? Yeah, if, being a vampire isn't so bad. They just took the werewolf story. As, as much as turn back at the end of the movie, as much as the Wolfman stole from the vampire legend. In the eighties, the vampire movie stole from the werewolf from the Wolfman. You yeah. know the. I think that's why we haven't had, like, a good vampire movie. I mean, like, again, like a straight vampire movie, which, I, you know, I mean, this works enough where the story, I think, is mm-hmm. is working. That this is probably the best vampire movie of God knows how long. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the, uh, you know, that the, we haven't had something that has the effect of those old ones because now when you have a vampire movie, like, everybody in the movie is a vampire. Yeah, Underworld. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody's a fucking, like, they're the army. Yeah, yeah the vampires the are the society army. society of Ugh. vampires. Ugh. Yeah, mm-hmm. modernization of vampires is ruined. This is why I do yep. like this movie is because I like how it does keep with some old vampire movie tropes. Mm-hmm. Even when uh, when Nick eats the the food and throws up the blood, oh that was oh great! That's so hilarious, yeah. man. Fish and chips, candy, candy chips, chips used to be chips. my favorite candy color. Chips candy anymore. Candy candy chips. Anymore. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> so he eats one, and yeah, it's just <laughs> geysers of blood shoot out of this guy. It's fantastic. Oh. And the way they warn him, oh, I wouldn't eat that. I wouldn't eat that. And then they get just the look on Vlad's yeah. face, like, mm, well, mm, and then it cuts yeah. to And that's the, like, the good the stuff. It's like there's such like little like like kind of vampire, you know, not even just like movie vampire tropes, but just like vampire. You know, yeah. legend. I saw there was a vampirist or some shit in the credits. Like, <laughs> I'm sure. Like some, a, like a vampire what, in story? Yeah, like I'm a sure. consultant. For oh, dude, that shit gets. I, I bet my fucking brother could be a vampire consultant. That shit gets That's deep, a dude. Job? No, come on. Like anything. All you do is write a book and then you go around to a bunch of conventions and be like, I'm a vampire scientist. It doesn't matter. You can be abducted (laughs) by an alien this week. You can get a job specializing in social media. You can get a job as a vampirist. I'm sure it's like, yeah. Tell you, dude. I want to do that. I do. I want to be like, I was abducted by an alien. Write the book, go on tour for the rest of my fucking life, dude. Just stick (laughs) to that story. Oh, it'd be genius. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But yeah, I mean, but it doesn't really. Like the the vampire, um, I don't know. I'm saying tropes, but I mean like you know, uh, garlic, holy water, silver, really silver. yeah, silver, Crosses. sunlight, crucifixes. Crosses. They it doesn't stray too much into like folkloric vampire stuff where like can't cross streams of running water, you know, yeah. having your shoes tied like knots. Vampires are OCD or whatever the fuck. It doesn't go into any of that stuff. Yeah, it is like the sure vampire that stuff that yeah. you've seen in stories and movies. Mirrors. Uh oh, yeah. tea, it's a ghost it gets a lot of mileage out of all of these things. And yeah. so like Deacon's story is basically going against Nick, the new vampire. Mm. That's his kind of Because he was like the young, sexy one of the group. Yeah, like, yeah before he was... Nick came along. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. Which I, I honestly think because I mean, obviously we just said that they base these characters on the like the quintessential vampire icons that we know of. And I think it's hilarious that Nick was like the, you're one of us, but we don't like you. He's Twilight. Mm. Like, Twilight's a vampire movie, but we hate you. Mm. And that's exactly mm. what his character Because, was. yeah, they didn't want him. Peter yeah. just kind of turned him for some reason. They're like, reason. well, you're right. one of us, but we don't like you. But maybe it's because Peter knew that they needed to get like brought into the modern world. That's why I like Peter. Like you don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> he's the old, the sage. Well, old but vampire. I've always liked the idea of like a vampire. Uh, if you were a vampire, the only reason ever anybody wouldn't be food to you is if you needed them, right? If you are mm-hmm. older, you need people to go out and bring food to you, right? So you need to make more vampires, right. or especially some if shit. you look like he does. And if these guys are so old fashioned that they don't get out too much, maybe Peter knew that like I need a younger dude that's gonna like draw these guys into the fucking twenty first century. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, that's a good it, idea. It's all behind yeah. the scenes. Like, this yeah. is my movie. This yeah, is like yeah, the yeah. novelization of what we do in the shadows. Well, it, it, it makes sense because it shows them when they're going out clubbing and they can't get in anywhere. Right. And then all See, of a sudden, that's, the that's something yeah. they did, like, for fucking real in the short film. They went out dressed like that and people are like, faggots and shit like that. And they're like, hey, that's not cool, you know, and shit like that. Like, why would you say that? We were just going out. That's really hilarious. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or something. <laughs> it's just, well, where'd you see it? Mm. Maybe it's on online YouTube. somewhere. Yeah, Probably. yeah, maybe I saw it on YouTube. I actually just watched it like a, a week or two ago. That's why I was a little worried when I watched it. I was like, "Oh my god, this is so close to the original." Then I was like, "We're gonna have to watch the. I'm gonna have to watch this again." Like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> but there's a lot of different jokes, so it yeah. doesn't like. I mean, that's a good idea that you know that they can't get in anywhere, and that you know that. But they have to be invited in. They, they have to be, <laughs> no, and you have no, to you invite. Just walk in. You just walk <laughs> in. No, but no. can't you just say, "Come on in." <laughs> Yeah. They're so polite. I'm like, all right, thank you. Because <laughs> I do think they probably did that for real. Going up to the oh, I'm sure. Like, That's why, like the camera security like, guys. So far back, it is pretty far shooting. back, yeah. and they're just shooting. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not as intense as as uh, the short film though. The short film one was like, god damn, it's like it looked like they were gonna get beat up because they, <laughs> they all look like fucking like Mozart walking down the street. And then uh, I love their fashion too. Yeah. Like, we're going to go out tonight. We're going to blend in. They can't look in a mirror because they're vampires, which is one of those things that you never see addressed in any no. any other vampire movie. You can only do that in a comedy, right? Yeah, like they're drawing pictures of each other right. to like. Oh, they have to what like, look like. <laughs> they have to like, like look at each other and it's like an 80s getting ready fashion show montage mm. it's hilarious yeah that's a really funny part <laughs> and they Just... end up dressing in like you know whatever they got the frilly shirts and all that stuff on for going out in the modern day but then he has like camo pants on yeah <laughs> that was funny like, no. once again <laughs> Biago is Take trying to be more modern than the other guys you know yeah and uh so um Vladislav's like through a uh, story is his arch nemesis, the beast. The right. Beast. And like, ever since the beast, like, the beast like the beast. bested the him, he's had trouble being a uh, beast. <laughs> I, it makes me mad. This movie can't say hypnotist. They always say hip hypnotizer or something like this movie doesn't say hypnotist. It's like, God damn it, people. <laughs> but, uh, the fucking joke about how, uh, how uh, he was the best at turning to animals, but now he never gets the faces right. Never gets right. the faces right. <laughs> it pays so, off. Yeah, it does pay off. But man, I thought that I thought the joke alone was funny. Like if you just imagine, he never gets the right. faces right. That's so yeah. funny. I mean, it, it's nice that they pay it off with an actual right. like special effect or whatever. But this is, I think, why like this. I mean, you know, why this movie works as a dramatic film. You know, in addition to or like say a narrative film is because it, for each character, it has built up like this, like they have a an setup opinion. and a resolution that's mm-hmm. everything's paying off. You can feel where the movie is like, you know, the, the pace of the movie works because we can tell like it has, you know, what's the resolution of this? Um, uh, Viago is uh, pining away for this woman. She's an old lady Catherine. now living in a... That's yeah. sad, too. Coast. I love that. Yeah. And he's, he's like standing staying, outside her window. staring up at the retirement uh, home. And then this like, the black. He's like, oh, we'll dude, when he, this later. When yeah. he explains the story, when he's like, you know, well, she was married, and I didn't, you know, I saw how happy she was, and I didn't want to take that away from her, you know? It's like, I'd rather have her, you know, be happy. And... <laughs> so he puts the picture on. So, like, <laughs> so I just... <laughs> but how's he put it? like, but I just, I walked away. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, that's so I know, sad. And then checks off in the coffin. I love when he figures that out. Like, he's had her picture in his little locket. It's yeah. a silver locket that yeah. he can't wear, right. which that's also funny. Well, oh, that's a nice scene when he, like, takes the gloves, puts the gloves on, and, yeah, like, so he can handle takes it, it out. Yeah. 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 But after Stu introduces them to technology, he finally has the, you know, he's ha- he's lived with this tiny little picture, <laughs> and now he can scan it and print out this larger one. And it was like, oh, this, yeah. you know, I mean, like, you really do see it through, like, the, the eyes of someone who's 180 <laughs> odd yeah. You know, it's like now I finally have an opportunity to see this bigger. Yeah, uh, dude. Oddly enough, my favorite part of uh, Interview with a Vampire is when he goes to the movies and he's like, "For the yeah. first time, I saw the sun through yeah. modern technology." Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why. I think that's fucking but brilliant. I think that's think the appeal of vampires in some ways. You know, I mean, just vampire and vampire stories. Is in this one, it was crystallized for me when um, Deacon's storyline with Nick, the antagonism that they have, mm-hmm. is finally resolved at the end. Where you know, well, it's uh, they Nick, both lose Stu. Yeah, they yeah. both lose Stu, and Deacon goes and sits down and actually tries to comfort him in a hilarious way, where he <laughs> doesn't do it at all. You know, but he's basically explaining, like you know, the the 
the third party view that like vampires have of the entirety of human mm-hmm. existence. You know, it's like they can talk about, you know, like, well, your friends will die and they'll do this and this will happen. And it's like this character just lives past all of that and, mm-hmm. you know, and just watches it happen. I don't know. That, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Would you, uh, would you say this movie has stakes? Uh, no, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> like what you're saying, emotional stakes? Kind of. Yeah. No, you just get to know these people. I mean, that's what I like about it, because everybody's like, even the smallest thing is a stake, right? It's not like, oh, my God, the stakes are big. It's not no, like, no, if, nothing, we go, if we don't huge. make it to the unholy masquerade. No, nothing huge, but just for the characters, kind yeah. of where they start and where they're going. I think that's what makes it. I think, it, yeah, it does. I mean, in that, in that respect, because right. that's what gives you the interest. It's the, the, the development of those, you know. I mean, even though, you know, I suppose in a lifetime that lasts, you know, I mean, each one of them is at least at least know, eight thousand years. Yeah, well, not quite you know, eight thousand, but I mean, from six hundred on down, you know, that you would have. I mean, the experiences I guess that you'd have over that period of time. It's amusing that, like, in a two-hour movie over the course of however long it's supposed to take, but basically like a year, right? I think yeah, like seven two months, months later, two months. seven months later, right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. That there, these kind of gigantic uh, upheavals are happening mm-hmm. in each of their lives for the, you know, presentation for us, the audience, you know, Mm -hmm. but I mean, that's what makes it a a drama. You got to fit that in. You wouldn't have a movie. You wouldn't because it is basically, I mean, it all goes back to spinal tap, right? The core of spinal tap was, was, uh, that dude's like wife having more say in, in the band. Right. And, uh, Christopher guest character was, he was the Deacon character in this, right. The guy who's like, kind of looking in on this newly formed uh, partnership with some sort of envy, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you got to have, like, drama in these type of comedies. But I think it shows more in these comedies. They'll be trying to do comedy for an hour and a half. They'll just just be doing... It will be... Yeah, it will be, like, all these other fucking things that... Like, like, I just tried to... Party Massacre. Yeah, we'll be like that. Or, like, well, I didn't even get to finish fucking Popstar, Never Stop, Never Stop. No, because they fucking broke the rule. Did they? They didn't make it seem like a a, a documentary. Uh, it seemed like a reality show being shot with movie fucking film stock. It was just like, this isn't real. Like, you can watch What We Do in the Shadows, and it looks like a bunch of vampires in a flat. Yeah. yeah. even even Dude, even just having the camera spotlight adds a nice creepiness and mm-hmm. adds that yeah. nice little, like, vignette thing. Yeah. And, like... Well, because I realized at some point when they were walking around, there's a couple of shots, like, even toward the end where Viago's walking through the house and the, the light's on him, and I'm like... Oh, he doesn't have any other light on in this place because he's a vampire. You wouldn't yeah. necessarily need it, you know. It's yeah. like we're seeing him in this be- only because the camera's got a spotlight on him. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a cool touch. Mm. I guess that's the thing. It, they feel like real vampires, you know, like uh, right, yeah, yeah, real vampires. In quotes, they're treating it seriously. That they feel like, and they're yeah. not like human enough to like. They will kill you and eat you. Like they are fucking vampires, yeah. Right. Yeah. you know. Yeah, special promises for the camera crew, but other than that, yeah, yeah, or you never know. It's, it's just because they're protected, right? <laughs> it's just like they just they like do, yeah. Yeah. I guess that also just kind of goes to show you like how far Twilight, which is I guess like. Like, you know, the last big thing that vampires did in the movies, yeah? I guess or vampire so. movies. Yeah. I mean, the, how Underworld. far away that is from, like, what you yeah. know, I, mean, I like about Interview vampire Interview with the Vampire movies. started that shit. Interview with the Vampire Pretty started vampire. the lovable fucking, like, I hate being immortal. <laughs> 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 I don't <That's> understand <laughs> it. <Yeah. laughs> like, what? Yeah, they'll kill you. Shut up, Louie. I like the way that uh, each one of them, well, we never really see, but we, Vladislav taking, uh, killing people, I don't think necessarily. No, he he just like fucks women. That's like the best shot when he wakes him up and opens it and it's the, uh, it's the uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula shot of like the the three girls and the the red sheets. That's so fucking hysterical. But when... When Viago, it goes to, uh, you know, because his method is uh, to bring somebody home and then... Basically <laughs> wine and dine them. Because, uh, But I like it's his nice. philosophy. It's like, well, you know, this is the last moment of their lives and, you know, <laughs> we want to make it. Why not have well, them have They a say you time? should do that for chickens, pigs. Like, you don't want the meat to tense up. You want to fucking treat it as nice as possible before you fucking kill it or else it could, like, spoil the meat. And this also goes to the cannibals like, know that <laughs> how well the characters are, you know, how well these guys knew the characters that they were playing mm. that they mm-hmm. can convey so much in like a little facial 
gesture expression when he when the girl's telling him all her future plans. <laughs> yeah, and he's just oh, we didn't talk about her, that. You yeah. know, like mm, you know, it's a very sad. Yeah. Like I know that oh. that's not gonna happen, but <laughs> yeah, like, dude, it makes him it's so fucking hysterical. He's like smiling at her. Tell me what you do, and then she's like, after college, I want to travel. travel. I want to go to Spain, and his. Face he just, just like droops. fades yeah. into this sadness. <laughs> That's so fucking hysterical. And then he's laying down newspaper. <laughs> like, okay. Oh my god, that's so yeah. When he starts <laughs> laying down the newspaper, a pile of towels. <laughs> and then just the what, your red couch. Well, it's red it's now. now. <laughs> but I like how at the same time though it shows how vicious. He's like he's only right? caring about messing up the room you know i mean yeah yeah, he's sad about like ruining her dreams but he's still (laughs) just sad about messing up the room yeah and And she's just like getting ready because she's like oh he's gonna kiss me puts uh, (laughs) his uh, His little handkerchief little napkin (laughs) and one of my favorite characters in the movie is deacon's uh familiar (laughs) yeah oh my god jackie great because that i I, man i've always felt fucking sad for these characters in vampire movies i never understood like why would you do this but it's just because they're getting the the whole uh gift of immortality kind of dangled in front of them they're hoping when usually they'll just be a zombie or a, yeah. or a ghoul or something like that. Eating bugs. She didn't eat bugs. That would have been a nice touch. If she would have ate a bug one time, it would have been nice. Is that just a Renfield, like Renfield yeah. thing? Or is that just all I just thought they always, because well, he got they're kind of like half like, vampire, so they're still trying to suck life. Yeah, from, that was like, Renfield's that's why, thing, right? Yeah. Like this, even but, this tiny little thing has life in it, and that's the way I'm going to take it. And eventually the master will promise me Bigger lives. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. You know that. Yeah. But... I know it from Dracula Dead and Loving. <laughs> yes. No. But even yes. no. Jackie's storyline like pays off by the yeah. end of this. Yeah. Story. In a great way. <laughs> or okay. Uh <laughs> Nick uh, Nick ends up turning sound, her sorry. because there's After the big out. well Nick yeah Nick uh he's going around telling everybody he's a vampire that's a fucking <laughs> funny scene dude like you can't tell everybody you're a vampire <laughs> here why not why not I'm yeah. Twilight he's what? Twilight I'm Dracula <laughs> Twilight <laughs> and uh I I love how it does come off as a joke like I'm a vampire hunter he's like shut the fuck up right. you know like you're an yeah. asshole <laughs> like I'll, and it is surprising when uh when Peter is like on fire in the basement right yeah yeah when uh you know they just kind of wake up in the middle of the night there's like a fire alarm or something because the cops shit i didn't like really oh, make yeah. that like i need to go back and check that no they hear him screaming they did they oh yeah, okay yeah. you're right damn it this should have came after that would have been funny yeah if the fire alarm would have woken him up to peter's scream but yeah but then the yeah the guy was a vampire hunter and killed peter and then uh cops go well there's the big uh fight between deacon and nick <laughs> And the then the cops time, come. Oh my god! The first time it's during the flat meeting at the beginning where they like start getting at each other's throats and they start fighting. And they go, Whoosh. oh, they fly up in the air. <laughs> oh, That's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like they use those effects. I mean, it's not like they're overdone either. It's just no, like, no. well, I guess they're vampires, so they would do this, right? They vacuum <laughs> by floating around. Right. You know, it's funny, but it's also like, well, I guess how else would they? You know, would you do it? You <laughs> can when, <laughs> when Nick's trying to get in the window. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Nick, why don't you use the door? So I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. <laughs> yeah. There's a really funny joke in the short I wish would have been in this during that flat meeting about the chores where someone goes like, it's your job to wash the shower. It's been 20 years. And Viago goes, you're supposed to wash that every year. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they, do you think that they're mainly praising the idea of the vampire? Or do you think that they are mocking it? Or both? I mean, they're not making them look stupid. They're making them look dangerous. They're making them look kind of evil. Uh, but they're not like, you know. It's like it, they're being they're respectful. respectful. Yeah, they're respectful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of the lore. I mean, like, you know, again, I just keep coming back to it. Like, they're more respectful of what I've always, you know, thought the Hollywood vampire is. That you know, in a way that like you know, all these other movies aren't. So it's like, and yeah. in, in, it's they're able to, and they're able to use the the 
the stuff you don't see, like the mm-hmm. stuff that happens behind the scenes of a vampire movie. Because I guess when you figure, like, how do they get dressed? You know, it's mm-hmm. like you know, if they if you can't see yourself in the mirror, it's all those little things that, like, well, if you were really a vampire, this would be a problem for you. How do you get into a place that you know you can't be invited <laughs> into? And so that's where it finds like that humor. So it's not like they're mocking. They just find the thing. They're, they're finding the humor, humor in, in the situation. Yeah. If it was a real situation, you had to play by rules. Right. If we brought yeah. this into the real world and you can't go anywhere, go inside anywhere unless you're invited. What else can we apply? That I to, love that to when find they comedy. wake up and he's like, "This is the scariest part." When he's going to open the <laughs> curtains. <Yeah. laughs> like, ah, nighttime. Yeah. Yes, nighttime. There's also the uh, they have a run in with um, uh-huh. a pack of werewolves. That's hilarious. Well, like the uh, underworld thing, right? Because werewolves and this... vampires hate each other for some reason. For some yeah, reason. I mean that's always been going on. Apparently, I don't know. Well, I always thought vampires could control werewolves, right? Children of the Night and all that jazz. Mm. But you know, if you need a Matrix movie, you got to make werewolves versus. Vampires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the the berserker berserker class, right? The vampires, I guess, can maintain some level of intelligence, even though they're dead. And werewolves, once the full moon comes around, they just go crazy. They're but right. these guys, that lead werewolf dude, is he in? He's other in. Stuff? He's got a, he's a, a bunch of he looks British. He's, seen him before. he's a big part on Flight of the Concords, and he's been in a lot of other. I've stuff. seen him in some other stuff. Yeah. What I love about these werewolves is I always hated like, so what the fuck is it about getting bit by a werewolf that makes you into a biker? Like, what would, like, why can't you just be a normal dude and be a fucking werewolf? And I like yeah. how this is, like, these guys aren't trying to be like, yeah, it's awesome, I'm a werewolf. They're trying to be a self-help group on how to calm <laughs> themselves and not turn into werewolves when they get, yeah. and it's <laughs> right. even down to swearing. Like, how swearing is a negative thing that, like, right. releases your, like, anger and... Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. Like, dude, when he, like, pretends to throw the ball, it's like, don't chase it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Just, oh, it's just too funny. Like, that's the best way to depict a werewolf vampire. Like, it's more like a childhood thing. Right. Uh, that's why it's like, I just love Kids comedies because you can other. show certain serious things that aren't serious. Like, you can have rivalries that are shown to be, like, like all rivalries, if you take a step back, could be seen as like a middle school level rivalry, right? No matter how serious you want to take it or how violent it gets. I like how comedies can take a step back and show like how fucking stupid both sides are for <laughs> yeah. like whatever they don't like about each other. And then a nice like they get their friends at the end, right? Yeah. And that's a, like, yeah, I mean, what everything's going to work out in this case because, you know, everybody, it's just because of the, like, gentle nature of the film itself. Like, yeah, even indeed. though it's an R-rated comedy and yeah. there's lots of gore flying around, some, it's still, like, somehow, some it's, like, you couldn't it? make this movie. I don't think there's any nudity in it. I don't know. There's, uh, I mean, there's, you know, suggested sex you know, yeah. throughout, but I don't think there's any like, mm-hmm. but I, I mean, remember. I don't think like a, an American filmmaker, it feels to me, wouldn't make this type of movie. And no. somehow that's why I respond to it more, not because necessarily an American wouldn't make it or even, you know, that it's, it's form, but it's like only they oh, can, some, they're more steeped up. in the old, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I mean, but, I can't if say. If Christopher Guest made this, would make this it's movie. Either, it's either like Christopher Guest or Keen Peele would be the only one. Yeah. But I think you need to be European, because I think that's so the too, only way to get so authentic. that's why they do it so well. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. yeah, like, we could try to make Nosferatu, but it's We're not going to be white, anything yeah. like a fucking German making Nosferatu. it will be like, you don't know depression. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, Werner Herzog remake? Uh, oh, I've seen some of it. Now? Very weird, right? When they're dancing in the streets because oh, they yeah. all have the plague. Well, so they're just got the madness like, to it. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, That's a great vampire movie. It's what, a, what is it? What's it? Nosferatu. Well, the oh, re- remake. Uh, Werner Herzog. Werner like Herzog. Something in the seventies where Hello. they were reappraising I'm going like to make old Nosferatu. German films, and he got to remake Nosferatu, the old German movie, the original, <laughs> yeah. in yeah. sound and in color. Whoa. Um, so you think this blue Nosferatu? So you think this was showing the importance of showing the comedic side of horror? Just the comedic side of having boundaries. Even though you can be immortal, everybody has boundaries. It's human to have boundaries, right? They're showing the human side. All comedy is showing the human side of things, right? Showing the, you know, whatever the mundane or so. But is it showing the yes. the comedy side of horror? <laughs> I mean, it's no, not. No, I mean, it's that, showing. Like, other horror comedies that come immediately to mind seem like they are more horror movies 
with like a very strong, you know, comic comedic instinct mm-hmm. throughout. Because you're Where's, usually not with the <clears throat> antagonist, supposedly, right? These guys are supposed to be the they're the monsters, <laughs> right? So yeah. you're not. It's, it can't be so much horror because they're the ones perpetrating. Mm-hmm. That's why I did like the scene when the familiar invites uh, Nick and some girl over. And you get a little bit of horror because it's uh, you turn on, you go to Nick's point of view because you don't know he's going to become a character. So it goes to Nick's point of view right. trying to escape the house. And mm-hmm. it does turn into horror. It just shows, it reinforces how much of a threat they actually are. I guess maybe that's what how it gives it an, a horror edge or it mm-hmm. gives it that, at least some kind of, you know... Um, because they're finding like joy out of it. I mean, they're even even though Viago is a foppish guy or the fuck, it's like they like killing. They enjoy it. They don't have any problem with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think some that is doing it, but not some problems with it. And I think that's creepy. That is creepy in my mind because Viago is a nice character. I think he's like my favorite character in this movie. I like that he's, he's at great. the forefront, especially like with someone like uh, Jamal, blah, 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 yeah, Jermaine. Jermaine. Jermaine, Jermaine Clement. Clement. Someone yeah, like, he could have been very easily the main character because he's got the most fame or probably just because he's got the most fame. I mean, it's from the creator. He's on the, you know, he's the main guy in the box. Yeah. But but even though Viago is kind of the main character, talks to the camera the most or whatever, but he, to me, he is the most likable character because, you know, he's got a soft and a fucking... <laughs> Vladislav, I don't know. You're like, I mean, I like them all, but like Vladislav has uh, some of these moments. Like, let me do my dark bidding <laughs> on the internet. What are you doing? I'm bidding, I'm on, the bidding on the table. <laughs> but, but, but he's all comedy. He's all comedy. Like, I do think the Beast Look is the me. weakest. Uh, oh yeah, he hits the window. <laughs> oh my god. But I, I do think me. the Beast is the weakest storyline. <laughs> Because the beast, it, it's there. There's no like everybody else has a storyline that they can visit back once in a while. The right. beast is something he kind of mentions is oh, this is his his nemesis. Mm-hmm. And then when we get to the, uh, I love that. You it's, hear the story of the I fought the beast on the top. Of I the fought the beast in the swamp. I fought those are places he fucked <laughs> the beast. Get your hands off my balls, beast! <laughs> but you find out the beast is his ex girlfriend or yeah. whatever, and she's the guest of honor at the unholy mask. That he thinks he's supposed to be the guest of honor. <laughs> See, but, even though it was, you think it was the weakest, I loved the lead well, up to the, that. The, the, well, that's the peak of that yeah. storyline, though, is the lead up when he's just laying in the coffin. Yes. He's like, the, oh, beast. the beast. You didn't see that. Co- <laughs> that's funny. He's like, the beast. Like, he's got like half his eye closed. The he's beast. like in a trance. <laughs> that's when you could tell someone's riffing, right? When they're just doing funny, funny shit, and then they just happen to get the one where he's like, beast. Says it fucking weird. But I, I don't know. I just don't think it had. I'm saying everybody else was emotional. His wasn't. His was pure mm-hmm. comedy. Right. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, I you think know, he's, a, he's kind of more of a shallow a, character. So his, for sure, his story he is a, is a little shallow, more because shallow. he's trying to be what the vampire is. Like he's right. he's got the uh, the front, I guess, I th- of what you would assume. I think the right. whole thing behind that is because he was from the Dark Ages. He's yeah. from this medieval time, so he doesn't really have any time for for any sort of. Um, like sentiment, you know. That's true. I like the he has like more torture sex. done. He does. Yeah, yeah. That's I really don't go funny. down so much, but he's uh, supposed to be sixteen. So. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, that's something you should. Back then, it was rough for a sixteen-year-old. <laughs> that was something I do need to like suggest. Go to the short film and watch them talking about their ages and what they look like. They, uh, it's fucking hysterical. I want to say when they go to Nick, he's like, he's twenty-seven. But looks twenty three. <laughs> something <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, the the world also. You know, I mean, obviously, we said that there's vampires and uh, werewolves in this. But at the unholy masquerade, mm-hmm. we find out that there's also zombies. Well, but mm-hmm. they say that on the invitation. It's one of the. It's right. one of the yeah. uh, which which is and when, 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 the the, <laughs> when they're showing like the old photographs Cater- of the previous uh, masquerade balls, they show like there's there's witches, there's banshees, there's right. evil of all kinds. Yeah. Well, but what, what, it was something like <laughs> like Caterman Zombie Association or some yeah. shit like that. That's not it at all. But the one <laughs> zombie is tired sounded- of the arms up moaning yeah. bullshit, and no, then was he- it- does it doesn't do it on purpose later on when he's going after a stew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that guy? Me, are you are you of the uh, predeceased? <laughs> pre-deceased persuasion? Was it was that guy in like a Rob Zombie film? He looked oh, really know. familiar because he's got that really weird skinny face. I, I feel like I've seen him before. It's I don't possible. Know. 
But it's funny that they bring Stu to the. Uh, oh, I mean, because yeah, because even this is, like well, I didn't even think of it until somebody brought it up in the movie. They're like, "Oh yeah, Stu," because Stu's been hanging around with them, right? Yeah. And they take him to the vampire masquerade ball. Is there? But it said plus one. It didn't say the. You know, no, that was dude. Nick's got <laughs> the best so line. He's my plus one. He's my plus one. <laughs> right, well, because this is the first one. time, like, because Nick has been kicked out. Because he's responsible for killing Peter or letting the you know the letting the vampire hunter, hunter know. He's been yeah. So he's been oh dude the shame, shame. The oh my god <laughs> that's so funny shame. Shame. shame 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 bad vampire bad vampire <laughs> <laughs> bye Stu bye <laughs> but uh so we like, when we get to the unholy masquerade. At we the see hall of like what? What is it? It's, it's, it's the, the citadel of, of, of suffering or something. Right, right. And it's just some like yeah. lodge. It, it looks was, like a lodge. A, it was a Victoria bowling alley. Yeah, what that's it was. What, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but so they meet up with Figure Nick again. Shitty banners. Yeah. Like at the masquerade is where they like kind of kind of rekindle. They kind of find their uh, whatever you want to call it. Right. You're forced to like meet with the other person. Deacon is forced to confront Nick because Nick turned his, uh, his, his uh, familiar. Yeah. Into a uh, vampire, yeah. <laughs> which I love for her. I love for yeah, her. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I was really hoping she'd get that. Well, cause I love how like throughout the movie, it shows her like, like <laughs> just randomly cleaning up some shit and kind of like, Sighing into the clouds or whatever, like I just love it. Dude. Yeah, I feel so he, sorry for Redfield. when he tells her that Nick was turned and that pushed her back and she couldn't do it now because Nick was turned. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to <laughs> pay for this for ten years, probably. Yeah, have to wait. and yeah, and this is like a binding their fucking. Ruffles. She's like, if I had a penis, I would have been turned a <laughs> year ago. A dick biting club, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm over here ironing their frills. <laughs> <laughs> their fr- <Right>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wear frills, for God's sakes, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a blouse. <laughs> a blouse, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They wear blouses. <laughs> and then she sneaks up behind him at the masquerade right. ball. Yeah, what yeah. are you I'm doing a here? I'm a vampire. <laughs> I'm a vampire. No, I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. Who bit you? Nick. <laughs> oh, no, Nick turned me. But that resolves <laughs> also uh, Vlad <laughs> and the Beast to get their, uh, you know, animosities out. Which that. Dude, that white mask he's wearing. <laughs> what fucking movie is that from? Isn't that... Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, thing? it looks, is like, it eyes it wide looks shut? like the one from Eyes Wide Shut. It's got that pointy nose. Yeah, it's got that yeah. weird pointy, like, yep. weird. <laughs> but him and the ugly, the ugly vampire. I love they, that makeup. They, they like, never that was good makeup. explain why he's that way, but that's amazing. Maybe he got, like, burnt or something. But they put or... it in the movie, too. Like, look at that. Is he, is he a vampire? Look at him. Why is he a vampire? <laughs> I love that makeup. He's one of my, like, I could watch a movie with that vampire just because he looks so, like, I, you don't, I've he's never got, seen. like, a big nose or big beak nose. He looks like, like a human form of the Count. In a weird way, yes. <laughs> he does. That's what he looks like. <laughs> he's, he's even kind of purplish. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. Dead yeah. On. He's the human form of the cow. And what made it so hilarious was his Australian accent. Like <laughs> having a yeah. vampire barbecue. <laughs> yeah. It is genius. I love that guy. Yeah. But like, I suppose if you have a world where Peter exists, you can have all sorts of different. Right. Looking, yeah. Because yeah. some of them had pointy ears and all that. You know, I mean. And they, had, they showed ones with like really the, the dark eyes and they all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. some look pretty crazy. Yeah. Which was that computer? You know what the one I'm talking so. about? It looked like a little bit of a computer, uh, yeah. like Tweet. white, like yeah. kind of stretched his be. eyes yeah. a little bit. But, but uh, yeah, as soon as they figure out Stu, like, like you can't bring a, a fucking human here. He's my plus one. Well, he's my plus one. <laughs> <laughs> but you said get, plus one. Nick is the best man. Like, he's the best. You get genuinely <laughs> concerned for Stu because I guess like, because oh, Stu, he's like a little he's pet Labrador or something because he doesn't say much during the movie. <laughs> and it's like, oh shit, you're right. You're in this fucking room with all these people who kill, you know, people like you. And he's so red. He's so red. So that's a funny the joke they keep man. repeating. <laughs> Little hands are red too. Yeah. Oh god. So and, yeah, Stu is in a dangerous situation. He's about so. to die. And who shows up? Vlad. 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 <laughs> to save the day. Stop. Beast. Beast. Hello, beast. <laughs> like, oh, beast. No, no, I've got it. That mask. turn afterwards. And I was almost thinking it's like, <laughs> like that seems like right, that yeah. could have been like completely. I mean, I, like I, mean, really I know this whole thing was unscripted, yeah. but right. it does seem like that could have been almost a cut. And he's like, I got this. You know, yeah, he's yeah, like, help, right. no, don't help, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the pause before he does it. And I kind of wish I don't know why. Like I don't know why. I want that to be big. Uh, well, once again, I think that's the weakest part of the film is the whole beast thing. It's like, yeah, it's his ex-girlfriend. But, like, it doesn't turn into anything. Yeah, there's some flying around and some fighting again, which 
is in a weird way ruined by the first scene of those guys flying up. It's like that could have been really funny if they fought and then flew up right there, you know, because you wouldn't have been expecting it. You didn't see that the whole movie. Right. But having Stu uh, kill the vampire guy, or wouldn't even know if he kills him. We're not even it sure. It doesn't feel like it. He kind of just stabs him, and he's yeah. just like, oh. He impales oh. him, and then they're like, we should go. <laughs> yeah. well, we should leave. <laughs> yeah. And they run away and hit the, va- uh, the werewolves. That's where they, they, they run in back yeah. into the werewolves. Guys, where are your track suits? When you change, you expand, you expand you're going to lose your pants. <laughs> and they start moving, like, all right, take off everything you want to keep. I forgot the combination. <laughs> yeah. Why did you get a combination? Well, I lost the key the last time. <laughs> Greg, look at that tree. Look how you know how big you get when you transform. Dude, I it's love too thin. it. Well, I'm the alpha, Find a different so. tree. Did you hear that they're talking about making a sequel to this sometime after for yes. Ragnarok, and it's going to be called? Well, they're saying uh, werewolves. We're wolves. We're wolves. We're wolves. We're the, ti- the working title right now is um, what we do in the moonlight. Oh, oh yeah. cool. more sense, be, right? <laughs> as a sequel. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be really cool. At least fun. we'll know it's what we do in the shadows. But that would be like yeah. way Two. more special effects. I wonder if they'll get around to doing that, right? Unless it is just going to be a sequel to this with more of the werewolves. Yeah. They'd, they'd probably get to see these guys run, you know, like the werewolves will visit their house and all or that something. Stuff yeah. Somewhere because I don't know. I mean, you, I don't think you would make a sequel without, uh, I mean, like halfway Jermaine through, you'd have to go back and see them. And- I yeah. would think that they would encounter them like they encounter the werewolves in this movie. Sure. They would have to. And especially would, now that they're friends. At the very end, they're they're friends with them But now. there's got to be like a third something. Now uh, they have a new enemy. There's got to be had, something, yeah. <laughs> right. Because it was the tension between the yeah. vampires and the werewolves. There's got to be another group. There's got to be witches. The were- the something, yeah, witches. Yeah. Yeah. Witches. <laughs> there it is. Witches would be good. Like werewolves and vampires are like, ah, witches. Yeah, see, yeah. it's got to be something They've like that. They've had Wellington for so long and now the witches are moving in. Something. Well, that's well, that's too much of a story for a mockumentary. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to break it down. But just something they can team up against. But yeah, it sounds like they're all really wanting to work on it. They're just all... I mean, they're probably very busy right Thor now. Thor Ragnarok's kind of a big deal. Yeah, that'll take you a while. <laughs> so all these guys will be in yeah. Thor Ragnarok, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't think so. I think it's just... I don't know. James Gunn put his fucking, like, brother and, uh... And, uh, uh True. God damn it, What's the guy name? from Walking Dead. Yeah, Michael... Oh, no. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He put them in fucking... Uh, after doing Super, his crazy superhero and type of trauma movie... Yeah. He put them in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and they'll be in Guardians of the Galaxy too, right? Because yeah. now they're characters. So That's how you do it. You bring your like supporting. Bring your friend. Yeah, but I think the these people guys, that work for free. I think these guys are actually doing things. I think they have actual jobs. Maybe. Where's so I don't know Jermaine? If they need to. Jermaine, whatever his fucking. I don't know his fucking name. It's Jermaine Clement. Jermaine. He's Jermaine. he's done a lot. He's done more than anyone else. I think. He's oh, done, sure. He's That's what's like. He has to. No, they wouldn't a make of, a sequel um, without him as a main. He's guy. done a lot of voice acting, um, like a lot of Pixar movies and stuff. Mm. And yeah, he's done a lot of indie stuff. Like I said, that one on Netflix is good. You guys should check it out. What's that one romantic comedy he was in where he was like his? He was like an artist, and his wife was like our some character. Your main character. He's a graphic artist. She Divorced. she like works with with Jermaine, and he, like there's a scene where he's wearing horns, like it looks like a devil of the pant. Fuck, mm. yeah, I cannot I think of it. No idea. Because it's a you know it's a fucking American comedy. It's very like what that happened. It very well blended. Yeah, else. yeah. Mm. Seriously, that's what I'm trying to think. Of, like, uh. all I know is that they're too busy to answer my questions because I send them messages. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this, so they're getting ready for the show. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. And nobody got back to no. you. No. What a bunch of <laughs> shit. Well, maybe they're listening to it now. You can write in for next week. Yeah, come on, guys. Yeah. Maybe should we say Send us we're your questions. We're on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Leave us a comment or on uh, Twitter at Sat Freak Show or the old-fashioned way. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. That's so, there it is. is that it? We're ready uh, to call it Igor? I think so. This is our, our mailman. mailman. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Uh, I hope no one sees what he does in the shadows. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's that coffin scene. Dum, dum, it's, dum, oh god, no! It's kind of yeah. musty in here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, all right, so uh, about okay, okay, so about our past episodes. Which ones? Uh, well, let's go oldest first or newest first. 
oldest first. All right, oldest oh, first. So we watched the Dude <laughs> Bro Party family. Massacre, mm-hmm. and Robin Lineman Silverberg writes Whoa. in. That is a hell of a name. And says, would this be on a par with the final girls or Tucker and Dale? I love Tucker and Dale, so no. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Final Girls, though. I've heard of it. Have you seen Final it's Girls? More, yeah, but it's That's more the on movie, the movie, right? Yeah, I keep forgetting which one's with that. Malin Ackerman's in it, and uh, uh, the girl who's yeah. her daughter gets sucked into the like the eighties. Does the eighties very... vortex show up? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Well, they go through a movie screen and oh, end okay. up in this eighty slasher movie. Weird. Uh, Wonderful. I don't know. Having seen them both, I would say Robin, uh, no. It's more, I don't know, dude, bro. Well, I mean, you heard the episode. It's very scattershot kind yeah. of comedy where those other ones, the other two feel similar, but not uh, not dude, bro, not unfortunately. Um, Sorry, and then, <clears throat> okay, so five second films wrote in about dude, bro, party what? massacre on YouTube. Yep. So this is from, I believe, Michael Russell. <laughs> this is from the guy that it's made the, the movie. He directed the movie. <laughs> 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 really? He says, thanks for braving the film. And yes, I am a huge slasher fan. Oh. Plus that guy who would sit down and watch Troll 2 all by myself. Oh, <laughs> wow. wow. So there you go. Wowzers. He, he's probably not listening to this show. But probably not. But Wow, that's you. crazy that he wrote in. Dude, bro, <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> all right, so about street trash. <clears throat> Dom Cree writes in and says, Sean, I may never forgive you for choosing this <laughs> I enjoyed watching Body <laughs> Mouth eyes. more than this, but that may be an Australian bias, I guess. Body Both movie suck. Yes. Uh, I asked him what Body Melt was. He says it's a really confusing health supplement melt, melt movie. Confusing as all hell, but entirely redeeming compared to Street Trash. <laughs> this movie insulted me and my lack of intelligence. <laughs> wow. And Ryan Burt writes in and says, it's a hilarious movie. Good pick for Street Trash. So it's very passive wow, aggressive. Right. Uh, both we've hit both sides. sides. Uh, yeah. Bravo. Wow. So if you want to write into us, like I said, it's uh, Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Hey, hit subscribe or like there also and get all the good stuff that we give out. So... You hear Whoa. that sound? People? That should be on our t-shirt. Get all the good stuff that we give out. Holy fuck. <laughs> I love it. Give all the good stuff that we give out, baby. The hour has come, says. Thank you, Lurk. He wasn't talking to me. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we're going to go around the room with wrap ups on uh, what we do in the shadows. And that means we're going to start with Colin. Uh, I love this movie. Okay. So this is, I had uh, what we do in the shadows down as one of my top five movies of uh 2014 mm-hmm. we all do that right we make uh no, lists at the insane. end of the year yeah, that oh, say these no oh my I never God. get to talk to anybody about them but yeah <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> so yeah i think uh i mean we've talked about i think all the stuff basically covered all the ground why i like the movie but it works as being funny it works as being a good vampire movie it works as being a good movie um i mean it's like it's yeah, I mean, I like seriously. If you haven't seen this, you should go check it out. It is that good. I mean, it's ironic that on the Saturday Night Freak Show we're watching an actually really good movie, which was why we were outside. You know, like I don't know what we're gonna be able to say about this because it's good, right? Because <laughs> really good movies don't get a lot of mileage sometimes when yeah. we talk about them. Well, you can't rip on them enough. But yeah, uh, yeah I think uh, it's one of the best vampire related movies that you're gonna like of the 20 years i mean you know something uh and so i would definitely wholeheartedly recommend it sean uh i mean there's not much i can add to that this is brilliant like uh and the the best compliment i can give it is that halfway through i wasn't tired of it which is usually what happens not with just comedies, but with if they're kind of um, if you get into a satire or something, uh, usually the, if it's just the comedy, it'll run out of steam halfway through. And, you know, that's when we stop laughing. We start yawning and it's just quiet. But no, this had it from start to finish. Um, every actor in this thing, I think, is great. Um, I, I definitely recommend it. Uh, thumbs up. Go watch it now. I want to watch it again. Yes. I really like this movie, even though this is like probably the third or fourth time I've seen it. And 
I mean, even with Christopher Guest movies, any of these mockumentaries, I think watching it once goes a long way for me just because you want these jokes to be fresh. You don't want, yeah. you know, you just don't want to retread the same ground over and over again, right? Or else you'll just... You don't want to get tired of it. Yeah, or... Uh, but I do think the uh, vampire story does... Because, I mean, in a weird way, like, the same way I could watch, like, Best in Show or uh, Mighty Win. I mean, I kind of never get tired of those because I just love the fucking joke so much. I feel like I could get tired of this, but it has the vampire story that holds it up or at least holds my interest. I love Nick the Vampire. This is Nick the Vampire. I love how he calls himself that. (laughs) So good. He's just one of the, like, just one of my favorite, like, vampire characters of all time. Just a dude that's a vampire. That's it. You know, he's not, like, cool or, I don't know. I love it. Um... I, I mean, I think this movie could be a tad shorter, maybe. I mean, it's an hour, t- 25 minutes. I think it could be a tad shorter. I think you could probably kill, like, maybe 10 minutes of this movie a little bit. But um, it doesn't affect the movie. I mean, so I like it. <laughs> wow, we really hit peaks and then come out of the Yeah, somehow I'm not like ecstatic about it. Like I really find this movie funny. I love the characters. I like the stories. I don't find it like I find it funny. I don't find it super hilarious. What? You're I was laughing. sitting there listening you to you guys peeling so with laughter. Okay, Maybe but if I found this super hilarious, I would be laughing before they got to the jokes. That's how you can tell a movie is super hilarious to me. If I'm thinking about the joke before they're gonna say it, and I'm so that's the only reason why it's like I love the characters in this movie. It's one of definitely one of my favorite vampire movies, just because I only have like I don't know a top five of vampire movies like. Fright Night, From Dust Till Dawn, Lost Boys, uh, 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 What no, We Do in the Shadows. The vampire, uh, Dracula movie, uh, or Martin, or... Uh, maybe Interview with a Vampire. Uh, I don't like vampire movies all that much. Daughters of Dark. No, yeah, I don't... Daughters of Dark. No, nah, I don't find them very good. Um, but this is a really good vampire movie. I like it. I recommend it. All right. All right, we're over. No, just <laughs> okay. Done! <laughs> Um, I was so excited to share this movie with you guys. I knew it was a risk because I knew we all liked it. <laughs> Except for Sean. I was excited to see what Sean thought because he'd never seen it. Of course. Um, of course. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I knew it was a bit of a risk, I but I, I went with it because it's kind of, a, it's a quirky movie and it's it's a little off the wall. Um, so I thought it worked. I love Literally, it. Literally, they bounce off the walls. Literally, they're bouncing off the walls. It's great. Um. Yeah, I, I agree with Colin. This is one of my favorite movies of 2014. Um, I just happened to stumble upon it, and I've seen it many times now, and it doesn't get old. I think it's hilarious. Um, I agree that I think it it covers a really great spectrum of vampires, and I think it's a really great angle on vampires. So it does hold up as a vampire movie. It also is a fantastic comedy. It's it's so great because it's well written, but it's not written. It's improv. But these characters are so well structured that it doesn't feel like it wasn't scripted. But it does. Like it's just it's very well put together. Um, yeah, I I hope you guys actually watch this movie and and uh, you know if you've already listened to the show, go out and watch it anyway. Um, but yeah, it's good stuff. I recommend it to everybody. What you we do? Buy it. If you've already don't seen it, it. Yes. just buy it. Buy it. <laughs> what we do in the shadows. And I forgive uh, Jemaine Clement and um, Mr. YTT for not responding to my comment. I mean, maybe next week we got fucking I mean, dude bro. The guy's directing <laughs> Thor. He's popular. <laughs> well, then he can say hi to Tom Hiddleston for me and then respond. There you go. This is getting creepy. We got to get out of this. Shut up. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's it for what we do in the shadows, and we will be joining you again next week. Uh, and I'm picking the movie, so Love we're going to be Love watching. Love it first bite. Love it first bite. Love it first West bite. Westworld. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that's Bro. right. We're going to head off the HBO series with the look back at the original Westworld. Robots. The yeah. original Jurassic Park. There you go. <laughs> so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.